Okay, good morning guys. Welcome to OFR. Uh, this video ain't so much fish related as it's about Tracy and to finish the modifications of the wheelchair. Um, so let me show you the wheelchair. Now you saw me guys, you saw me put the mods on to hold her air tank and her suction machine. So all that's in there. It's solid. I'm very happy with it. Works great. Holds everything in there fine. The suction machine does fine. The air, somebody said they shouldn't be on their side. Um, that was be for liquid oxygen. This here is compressed uh, oxygen, and uh, there's no water in it. There's no liquid in it. it. It can be on its side. Everything's fine with that. Now, here's the problem, though. See how the chair sits almost perfectly straight up? Josh, you're in the background eating. <laughs> okay, this chair sits almost perfectly straight up, so when Tracy's sitting in there, um, it, it makes her want to fall forward so we have to you know hold her back and it's a pain to have her in the wheelchair like that so realistically I'd like to have this wheelchair leaning back some um, so that she can hold her own head up and everything but she falls forward in this chair so I've realized Josh you want to come hold this for me real quick I've realized one thing if I take this wheel off here it becomes a transport chair, but it also leans down an inch into the back. Which, if you look from the side, now the chair is leaning back more. Still isn't enough. So here's my next mod. I was going to do it like this, and what I wanted to do was extend the length of the front forks to hold the chair back like that. That would work. But that means now I have to grind off this powder coating on both sides and weld an extension on and then drill a hole for this wheel to sit lower paste. I've got a better idea. This seat is already, let me move this out of the way, this seat is already at an inclined back so we're okay there. But now if I take this off of the back, I can take this metal pole right here, I can take a cutoff wheel and make a slice into the back and then a slight wedge slice bend it back until they touch. Now that'll give the, the bar a lean back and put a little bit of weld across the back right here. Then I can retouch up the paint and it's under this cover here that's the seat. I can screw that back in, everything's fine. Um, it will tilt this whole thing back a little bit. So I think that's the way I'm gonna do and uh, I've decided to go with that. So we've got plenty of room when this is down for this bar to come back at least and you know, an inch right there. So this can come back and it can lean back to about there. So that would give her the proper angle to sit up on her own accord without us having to tie her in. So that's going to be my next modification to this. And that way I can put the big wheels back on and she can still be leaned back a little bit. Okay, so you see right here where the seat is this clamp we're gonna right here right above it and right here and you can see we've got this much room to move it back that should give her the amount to, of lean back she needs okay so instead of welding and, and doing all that because I have to take the chair apart I'm gonna have to cut it then weld it Josh come up with an idea why don't we use our electrical conduit bender it might work we're gonna give it a try so let's set this up in the tripod Josh keep it recording and just set it on us so now Josh is going to hold the front of the chair and we're going to bend or try to bend this down let me get this arm out of the way now where is that uh right now we are at a straight 90 bend 90 degrees we're going to try and change that so let's see if we can manhandle this and do this the right way without welding it. Okay, Josh, you ready? Yeah. Let me see if I can bend it. Well, I can definitely pick you up. I'm going to have to jerk on it a little bit. Move it up more. It sure did. We gotta go a little more. Are you ready? Maybe move this up a little bit. 
Okay. One more time. Yep. Let me see if that. Touch more. Should be. I put this on here. Oh yeah, you can definitely see the difference now. So we didn't have to weld. We used our manpower and our ingenuity, and oh, okay. oh yeah, now I can't even stick my finger in between there. That worked great. What does the angle of that back look like? Oh yeah, now it's sitting back. Alright. Me and Josh bent the other side to match it perfectly. It's perfectly leaned back. Um, we're going to go ahead and screw this back back on. tilted back more than it was so I think we will you know it's still sitting pretty upright but it is leaning back now as you can see I can't get my fingers between here like I used to I used to be able to put my hand in there and move back and forth so it definitely moved back um, but you know if, if we need anything else I can always take these and weld on a little more metal and put the screw down here which would efficiently tilt this back like so so that's the next option if we need it I'm gonna take Tracy and put her in this chair and see how it works and hopefully this will be this will be good um, so there you go on today's edition of Rich's Fabrication Backyard Hillbilly Ingenuity how about that <laughs> Diesel wanna say hi hi buddy <laughs> hi what you doing Hi. Hi. Aww. Poor little diesel. Okay, so, because next week it's going to be in the 70s. Next weekend it's going to be 69 and 70. It's going to be sunny. So, I want to get her outside as much as possible. Let her hang out by her ponds. Walk her around the, the, the neighborhood. Let her feel the breeze in her eyes, in her face. And, uh... You know, I want to make it as, as simple as possible. We still got to take the plastic off these tires. See, when you put these big wheels on, it lifts the little wheels off. The With the little wheels, it's a transport chair, and you can get in and out of bathroom doors and stuff. With the big wheels, it's a wheelchair, and she can wheel herself. So we really don't need the big back wheels on. If we take them off, and I can take her around the block like that, that'll actually lean it down and lean her back more. So we don't need the big wheels on there until she's able to move herself. That's what the big wheels are for. So, and then, oh, this is the brake here. Okay. Oh, that's a nice little mechanism. Perfect. I like that. And then you've got brakes on these tires too, right here. But that's not for the... The, this is for the operator to lock their wheels, but this is for the person moving the person in the wheelchair to lock the back wheels. So when these are off, we have a way of still locking the wheels and setting her still. I'm liking it. All right, so let's go look at some fish. You see the kitchen? This is Tracy's air compressor. I'm going to take this hose out. I believe every time we go in and out we have to you know we set stuff down in the kitchen that goes out well grab it as you walk by so anyways we're heading out here dun, 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 dun. and there's our pool oh look one of the prune sharks over here nice there's that big big niger and then here is the drone bob was working on us uh, or gave us i worked on it got it running um, the only problem is I need a camera mount for my phone. I used the zip strip and it kind of, the, the camera went sideways and it just wasn't that, that well. So I, I need to make a camera mount for this, but this thing actually works. 
I'll show you how it does work. Let me take these things off. All right. Now it's going to float more because I have it set for when my camera is on it. It's, you know, sinks more. Let me grab this remote. Ouch. Okay. Now, here's how it works. This is forward on, on the one side, forward on the other, and you push them both forward and it goes forward. Same thing with backwards. And then you've got these buttons up here on top. You can push this and it goes, sinks down. Push this one and it comes up. So what you got to do is make that thing neutrally buoyant. In other words, if it's down, it would. if I let off the buttons, it should stay there. See how it's floating back up? And boom, it's back up now. It, it, it should stay at the level that I put it. Like there's about halfway down. It should stay there. That would be neutrally buoyant. Well, once I add the, the weight of the camera on there, um, it's almost neutrally buoyant, but it sits a little front nose heavy. So I have to add a weight on the back now, and then we should be okay. But this is just more things got going on all at once, and this is from our buddy Bob. So I also have to make, it's got 50 feet of cable. See the cable down in the pool? It's got 50 feet of cable, but I have to walk around this is the remote, it goes to that battery. So I need to make a belt or a, a neck strap that would carry that battery with me. And this is for more flotation. But that's just one of the projects we got going on here. That way I can have underwater drone footage, put my camera on there and go around and check out everything. I like that idea. And as you can see, we got this globe tank back up and running. And, you know, free of all, all that ick that was in it. So we're going to put fish back in there. Here's the goldfish and the high fin bandit sharks. Let me give them some food here. There we go. Now there's one really, there were nice goldfish there, but there's one really big bandit shark in here. There's four more. Where's the big guy at? I don't, maybe behind this pot? Nope. Where is the big bandit shark? I don't see him. He's always hiding. Maybe he's behind this filter intake or behind the air bubbler. Oh no, that's him right there. There he is. See the size of him? He's a big boy. Oh, I forgot to turn on the lights. This morning when I was feeding, let me turn them on. There we go. Okay, that's much better. We got this uh, plant somebody came by and dropped off for us. So we're letting them start and grow in here. Once they get their roots, we'll put them in different tanks that we want. Because there is there is natural sunlight in here from the things, plus the, the light here. So this is always a good place to have them start. All this stuff here, if anybody's building or wants artificial coral stuff, I'll get rid of all that stuff. It's just in the way. It don't need to be sitting here. And the size of them, they're pretty big. You know, let me pick this up. Ugh. That's a big, heavy piece. But we just don't, we're not using them here. And... I would catch heck from everybody if I put together the saltwater tank I've been wanting with artificial corals. People would lose their minds. <laughs> so, uh, look at the baby shack toys. Let me zoom in on them. The biggest one in there is about eight inches. They're growing fast. All right, now we're at the back deck. We wanted to finish enclosing this last summer but winter came too quick. Right now, this is the facade for the Dwight Howard tank, this one and that, that's the front and the back. If you can see back over here, there we go, now we're in the dark. There is the canopy in the tank and then you've got the steel stand. That facade is for around the base of that steel stand. So those two will go in there when we find the room to, to be able to do it. And then, as you can see, let me get out of that light. Okay, we've cleaned up all the wood that was up here and all that big pile of wood back there and the pile next to the burn pile, we burned it all. So we've got, the only wood left now is around this tree and that whole tub is full of wood. So we've got to now burn them another, you know, wood burning night. And uh, 
Look at all this algae's taking over. Very nice. All in the pond there, which I like for the startup of the pond. I don't like for once it's, you know, uh, matured, but right now I do like the algae in there. Um, it does help eat up all the string algae eats the nutrients that algae needs to grow out there so as long as i see out, out you know algae growing out there i know that i need to leave this go more so once that clears up out there then all this algae is eating all the nutrients up and we won't have no algae out there without chemicals how do you like that so um yeah we're gonna try and get this enclosed and then we can take off all this vinyl siding and bring it back down to the T57. And then this will be, you know, the interior of the back deck. We're going to put three ceiling fans up. Um, I got to run electrical out here. I got to do a lot of stuff. Got to get to the, the building permit company and let them know I want to run electrical back here and see what guidelines I have to follow because Strongsville is kind of weird. They have uh, different guidelines in other cities, but... I check with them first and then I know what I have to do and I'm not building and doing something and then they change it on me. So I just follow their guidelines and we get it done. We have this extra filter here that's been running, keeping these bio balls, you know, full of bacteria, but it's an eyesore. So I want that out of here. So, but that can go underneath the 580. Um, we have this one's up here. So we're going to be doing something with this tank soon. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what, you know, we always just, we've got a multitude of projects always wanting to do. Like, we still haven't gotten around to the saltwater tank. I decided I don't like this. I don't like the background. It's too fake. It's too, I want it more naturalistic and realistic. So I'm, I'm going to get rid of all that rock out of there and that. I'm not going to build something and make it, you know, okay. I want it nice. So I got a couple of my coral reef buddies who suggested what I should do and I think that's what I'm going to do because I love their setups. Now we need to get all of this stuff out of here because now we got them pallet racks in the back. We need to move everything up onto the top shelf that we're never going to use and then, you know, open up the bottom shelves and move stuff back. Here's all my saltwater stuff that I've been saving for like years now. So I've got another sump there and I've got these two reactors. Um... There's another protein skimmer. There's another reactor. We have all kinds of stuff in here for the saltwater setup. There's the reverse osmosis system. There's, a, there's two gyre or gyre systems in there. There's an apex complete controller system. There's these uh, pinpoint pH controller. I mean, there's all kinds of things in here. There's, there's, we're ready for the saltwater build. So let's go in here. Actually, open this on. Uh, now, see, yesterday I hang my remote on here, and it turns on the 3,000 gallon, them three tiers, and this 80 gallon tank right there. Well, this popped off, and I come in here and find it in the water, and my remote was submerged. So I took the battery out. It's been sitting out for a day now. I'm going to see today if it works again. But, here's a little baby. See, just like that. You see how it popped off? It has to be on all the way. Okay. I was hoping that would do that. Here we go. Turn these on. And that lights up those. Now I can go over here. Take this one and turn on. And it lights up these tanks here. And the Bellagio's over there. So... Everything's lit up except for the 3,000 over there. And look at these guys. Look at how fat. They are growing so fast. They came in about four inches. Now they're about five and a half, almost six inches and fat. They eat everything we put in there. And then where, here's the stingrays. There's that big bass. Okay, oh, where's the team at? Uh, he must be behind, he likes hiding between this and the wall on that side. Sometimes I have to get a stick and chase him out so that we can see him. Um, 
Let me see here. The angel tank. Let me throw some food in for them. The angel and the discus. Okay, here we go, guys. Now, the shrimp pellets are for the snails. Every day, see how this side over here is cleared of snails? Every day I throw shrimp pellets in there. The angels eat some of it. But all the snails, you know, conglomerate down here, and I can take them out and give them to people. So, because them are just Malaysian trumpet snails, and they're pests, and they're just, they over, they took over this, this tank. So now I'm going to put in the brine shrimp for the angels and the discus. And then the, you'll see them picking that off the top. See, there they go. Okay, put this lid back on. Sorry guys, that didn't scare you. Look at this pothos plant. It comes out and it sends these little little things out trying to find water. And this is all new growth here. So if I had left this sit here, it would go between the lid and go down and find water and keep growing. We've got this stem here, which goes up over the top of the thousand gallon and goes all the way down to here. I keep adding more clamps. Well, as this grows down into the view of the tank, I'll then put it up and put a clamp on it. And it, the, the plant's not clamped in there. It's not, it's movable, but the clamp's holding it up from falling. And it just, it's gonna grow across this whole thing. And uh, I like it. And then we got them growing, you know, from all the way over on top there. And they grow all the way over here from on top of that tank and then over onto the wet dry. So, and then, oh, they're growing down the pool here and over onto this homemade filter. Yeah, that photos grows crazy. And here's what we keep our water at. It's 81 degrees in, in the water. You can see the that white thing right there. It goes down and into this overflow and measures the water. Or no, where's it going? Oh, no, it goes down into the, the tub right there. So it's in the pool. So that's the temperature of this sump, the lowest water we got. The higher the, the water is, the warmer it'll be by two degrees at the top. So like that tank could feasibly be 83 instead of 81, because this is the temperature of the water on the bottom. But this time when we put up the pool, we put an inch styrofoam under it. So it's much more insulated than the last pool. Last pool was sitting right on the cement and it was rough. All right. We have a guy that's making the, the plastic panels all the way across here with magnet background, and uh, it's gonna enclose that in and make it look like a stand, which is gonna be great. These guys are wanting some food. Let me get this cup out of here. I'll give you what's left in the bucket, guys. There they go. <laughs> I love seeing that. They come from all sides of the tank. There's no fish. They're all right there. That is just amazing. And you'll rarely ever see any hit the bottom. But you got to make sure some hits the bottom because of the little guys. So <laughs> I've got floating stuff too, which is right here. Put some, a couple of this in there. Loading. And now I'll put in the uh, the sinking uh, uh, small pellets for the, the babies. See, I can't turn this Bellagio tank on too because that's tied into the 3000 remote. So this whole three tier, that 80, and this Bellagio is also on that remote. All right, well, hope you guys enjoyed this little, I don't know what you want to call it, <laughs> uh, step into my world of, you know, doing things. All righty, well, you guys take care and stay fishy and have an awesome day.